On today's episode, we've got more good news for Tesla in Germany, a new update for FSD beta version 9, Tesla is fighting back at critics of the semi, we've got hopeful Starship launch timelines, and new casting machines arriving at Giga Texas. So let's get going. Elon Musk recently completed an unscheduled trip to Berlin, Germany, where he met with government officials to discuss progress on Tesla's new Brandenburg manufacturing plant. And unlike Elon's previous visits to Germany, where he has often seemed frustrated with slow progress and delays, this visit showed great optimism from both Elon and the Germans. Elon met with our favorite German, Jörg Steinbach, who is the Brandenburg Minister for Economic Affairs, Labor and Energy, and a longtime Tesla advocate, in addition to Dietmar Voigt, the Minister President of Brandenburg. Jörg tweeted that he and his colleagues had a very relaxed evening meeting with Elon Musk, Adding, in an atmosphere of mutual trust, we discussed the remaining tasks. Elon also had the opportunity to meet with Armin Laschet, who is a frontrunner to take over Angela Merkel's position as Chancellor of Germany and appears to be a strong supporter of sustainable energy and electrification. Even though at one point he did have to ask Elon if the future of cars would be electric or hydrogen, and to that Elon replied, Definitely electric because hydrogen is a waste of time, obviously. It's now expected that Giga Berlin will reach full government approval and be production ready in just a couple of months from now. Elon joked about an Oktoberfest approval with the media outside of the factory, then later tweeted Giga Berlin Brandenburg County Fair and Factory Tour on the 9th of October. This time frame is much later than the initial launch expectation of June 2021, but it's not the worst news by any means, as some reports had claimed that Tesla's production could be delayed into 2022. New updates from inside Giga Berlin show that the Model Y production line seems to be mostly complete already, with the Gigapress machines installed, the stamping line looking finished, and now a bunch of Model Y bodies are spotted around the facility. It looks highly likely that if first production can begin in October, as is hoped for, then we should be seeing deliveries roll out before the end of this year, and that is great news. Even more good news comes from the Court of Public Opinion on Tesla's Berlin plant. The company's third and most recent public disclosure has earned just 44 objections so far in the one month period that the documents have been made public. This is down from 373 objections that met Tesla's first public disclosure to Brandenburg residents at the beginning of construction and the 110 objections they received for their second disclosure. So far, all public objections to Tesla's construction that have made it to the German courts have been rejected. Tesla released version 9.2 of their new full self-driving beta software on August 15th. This is a couple of days late from their scheduled launch on Friday the 13th, but they were held back by unexpected factors. Bad luck day, I guess. But the update comes with a whole laundry list of new features and updates. I'm not going to try and read this all out or claim that I understand what half of this means, so maybe we'll just leave the list up on the screen for a while and you can try and decipher this for yourself. But it kind of seems from what we can tell that these updates are targeted at making the cars more confident in tricky situations. I'm guessing that the car is going to take more authority to accelerate quickly when it has the chance instead of holding back and being overly cautious as we've seen them do so far. It's now looking like we are just one or two more updates away from moving into version 10, which Elon says will be the next stage and the candidate for wider release. Elon said a month ago that we were about a month away from version 10, so that probably puts the real timeline about one month from now, or maybe two until we see version 10 released. And at that point, we might finally get the long-awaited beta button rolled out to a much larger sample of FSD users. Even though we now know that the Tesla Semi project is delayed into next year, we are still getting new updates on the vehicle and this latest reveal from the Tesla Impact Report is very important news that puts to rest many concerns with the truck's design. Tesla says that the Semi will be able to transport a payload 
at least as high as it would be for a diesel truck. And in the United States, the requirement for class eight trucks is to weigh less than 80,000 pounds with their load included. So that means that the weight of the actual truck is very important since every pound of tractor weight will take away from payload capacity. The concern with the Tesla Semi and with the whole concept of a battery powered transport truck is that the weight of the tractor would be so high that it would not be allowed to pull a reasonable amount of cargo. Even though in reality, an electric semi should be capable of towing significantly more weight than a diesel truck due to more engine torque, better stability, better traction and braking abilities. It would appear from Tesla's reporting that both the US and EU have actually approved a slightly higher total load for EV trucks, even though this has not been widely reported anywhere else that we can find. The impact report says with both the US and EU having approved higher weight allowances for electric heavy duty trucks, we expect the payload to be at least as high as it would be for a diesel truck. In the EU, electric semi trucks are allowed to be two tons heavier than diesel equivalents. and the US, the allowance is 0.9 tons. When fully loaded, the Tesla Semi should be able to achieve over 500 miles of range achieved through aerodynamics and highly efficient motors. The truck will be able to reach an efficiency of over 0.5 miles per kilowatt hour. In addition to that, real world data shows that 90% of semi trucks in the US weigh in at less than 73,000 pounds with their loads. So as long as the Tesla Semi is no more than 9,000 pounds heavier than a conventional truck, which it really should not be, then it should be perfectly fine to use for the vast majority of heavy trucking requirements. We've seen a ton of progress from SpaceX over the past weeks on getting both the ship S20 and booster BN4 prepped for their first ever orbital launch of the full Starship vehicle. And all signs point to SpaceX being launch ready in just a few weeks, but there is more going on that we need to take into account. First off, SpaceX still has a ton of work to do on both vehicles to actually reach flight ready status. And if they can actually pull it all off in just a few weeks, that would be incredible. We still need cryoproofing and static fire tests on both vehicles. That means that a test fire of all 29 Raptor engines on the booster still needs to be attempted. So far, the most they've fired off at once has been three. So that's a big step up and we don't know what's going to happen. Then after all of that, the vehicle has to be stacked again and then retested as an integrated unit, which could include some combination of a full stack cryoproof, wet dress rehearsal or static fire test. Secondly, we still have the FAA to deal with, and that's going to be the real factor that determines our timeline for Starship launch. In an absolute best case scenario, the Federal Aviation Administration would release a draft environmental review of the orbital Starship launch site today, then accept public comments for the required 30 days and instantly clear Starbase with environmental approval within a few days of the public comment window and then approve Starship's South Texas orbital launch license as soon as the necessary environmental permissions are in hand. That would put us in late September for a launch window, but that is again, best case scenario and it's basically impossible. In reality, a bare minimum of two or three months after the FAA releases its draft environmental impact statement is a more realistic best case scenario for SpaceX. In the worst case scenario, it's possible that the FAA will decide that SpaceX needs to complete an entirely new environmental review for its Starbase launch site, easily delaying Starship's orbital launch debut by another six months to a year. So while we're all really excited about all the amazing photos and news that we keep seeing out of Starbase this summer, we also need to keep our heads level by remembering the significant amount of bureaucracy that is standing in our way. This is a whole new breed of spaceship and that means it is going to be hit with a whole new set of hoops to jump through before it's allowed to fly. But most importantly, don't forget to check out our sister channel, The Space Race, and subscribe for regular updates on SpaceX and the entire spaceflight industry. Link is down below in the description. 
New drone video from Tesla's Gigafactory construction site in Austin shows a massive wooden crate has just arrived with the name Idra printed on the side. Idra being the Italian makers of the giant casting machines that are driving Tesla's next generation of vehicle design. And we know that there are already a series of casting machines operating inside Giga Austin, as we've seen both front and rear castings for the Tesla Model Y being made on site. So this new Idra shipment could mean one of two things. Either Tesla is further expanding on the Model Y production line in Texas, which would make a lot of sense to do, as demand for this particular vehicle has far exceeded the company's ability to produce them. Crossover SUVs accounted for over 45% of all vehicle sales in the US for the month of June, putting even more pressure on Tesla to get the Model Y to a much higher production capacity as soon as possible. Or this new box could be the first delivery of components for a brand new casting machine that we have not seen yet at Giga Austin. That would be the 8,000 ton press needed to cast the frame of the upcoming Tesla Cybertruck. This is another vehicle with extremely high demand coming in at over 1 million pre-orders. According to who you ask, some would say there are now over 2 million Cybertruck pre-orders, and there is a market demand to back that up. The crossover SUV might be the best-selling class of vehicle in America, but pickup trucks still come in second place. We are told that Cybertruck will begin production in 2022, but still no idea what point in the year we are really looking at. Tesla Model Y pre-production at Giga Austin is rumored to have already begun in some capacity, with a full-on ramp-up expected to begin in early October. Let us know what you think the Giga Press is for in the comment section down below. And for more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com, and make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, quick reminder, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. And as always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.